Ross Bowman Podcast. You better listen. Welcome back to the Ross Bolin Podcast, otherwise known as RBP, presented by Bolin Media. I am your host, Ross Bolin, back again with your co-host, as always, Chris Coles. Colson. Chris, say hello. Hello. If you're new here, our comedy podcast has been around for a few years now. Every week on Monday and Wednesday, we discuss mental health, current events, sports, music, history, animals, and more right here on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, or wherever you're listening and watching. On today's show, we're going to open with a focus on the first presidential debate of 2020 in an effort to help both sides understand the literally historic shit show we just witnessed and then spend the remainder of the show attempting to give everyone just one endorphin. Just one. Only one. To make up for the madness. Everybody gets one with animal talk and a small dose of sports. But first, RBP336 is brought to you by Bird Dogs, makers of the most comfortable all-purpose shorts in the fucking world. You can literally wear them to do anything, anywhere, at any time. So what are Bird Dogs? They're gym shorts with a built-in silky soft inner liner that makes underwear obsolete. And now they make pants. With built-in underwear. And without it, if you're afraid of change, you fucking coward. The most breathable, summer-friendly, golf-in-your-dick-off pants you've ever owned. Perfect for the golf course, the office, or a nice meal out on the town. They look great. Nobody will even know you're a thousand times more comfortable than they are in your bird dog's pants. They're shockingly comfortable. Feels like you're wearing nothing. Like you're walking around bottomless, like Winnie the Pooh with a top on and nothing else downstairs. They dry faster than a bathing suit. You can hit a workout, jump straight into the pool, get out, dry off in the sun wear them to drive around in your tesla because you have a tesla now then drive that tesla back home wash it with your golden retriever elvis because you're wearing bird dogs and you can do anything go to birddogs.com birddogs.com enter the code rbp when you check out and guess what they'll throw in a free pair of nunchucks because that makes sense nunchucks are back birddogs.com code rbp boom free nunchucks with your order of shorts and pants Enjoy your bird dogs. You will never want to take them off. They're a safe space for all your most valuable possessions. Now time for some announcements and shouts. Today is International Podcast Day. Look at us. Getting celebrated. September 30th, International Celebration of the Power of Podcasts. Wow. Hashtag International Podcast Day. Do you feel more wholesome? This is like when the, the eclipse happens for the Avatar you know, with the firebenders, the Sozin's Comet. I, I get this reference. You do? How do you do, fellow kids? Holy shit. Ross got an Avatar reference. It says here on the official website that the celebration is a great opportunity to connect with fellow podcasters, podcast listeners, podcast enthusiasts, and leaders in the podcasting industry, which I think at this point in 2020 covers 99.62% of humans. Did you know that? I, I didn't. That's I how many know. people are either fellow podcasters, podcast listeners, podcast enthusiasts, or leaders in the podcasting industry. And they can all be summed up with one name, friend of the pod. Help spread the word by telling your friends... Sharing the celebration on your podcasts and social media feeds and using hashtag International Podcast Day. So here's what we're going to ask you to do as our listenership. Just fulfill your legal obligations. Every day for you is International Podcast Day because if you don't share the show with one person, our lawyers will come for that ass. Them juicy cheeks. And if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, you'll find out at the end of the show. Cole, you had a happy uh, birthday or two you wanted to throw out. Yeah. Happy birthday, Waylon, turning 21 today. Shout is it Waylon or is there. it Waylon? Like Waylon Jennings. It's W-A-Y-L-O-N. I really apologize if I mispronounce, but Funk I'm going with that one. Could be either one. Hell. Could be both, depending on where he is geographically. Happy 30th to Brian as well on this Sunday. Hope it's a great one, brother. Those are my shouts. Right on. Uh, episodes, again, are available on SoundCloud now. For all of you who preferred listening on SoundCloud back in the day... We're back on SoundCloud. It's all gravy. We had a little hosting switch a couple months ago. Some things were a little wonky. I fixed them because I'm the smartest man alive. It only took me two and a half months when it should have taken several minutes. YouTube.com slash Bolin Media if you want to watch episodes of this show instead of just hearing them. YouTube.com slash Bolin Media. Watch the show. See our shining faces. The emotions. The eyes. Well, your eyes. I've got sunglasses on. It's none of your goddamn business. Uh, Twitch. We're live on Twitch every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time. We play Call of Duty Warzone. There's obviously a 
a new season that just came out. There's a new version of Call of Duty altogether. Cold War about to come out. We'll be playing that, obviously. We play Fall Guys. We've been playing Among Us and having fun with that. We play with podcast listeners sometimes. We, we have discussion topics on the show. Last night, we watched the debate live on Twitch and reacted to it during our stream, our, uh, our Tuesday night stream at 7 p.m. Central. So Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Central, twitch.tv slash boss. Roland, it's Ross Bolin with the B and the R reversed every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Twitch.tv slash Boss Roland. It's time. First segment. The first 2020 presidential debate. So last night, Chris and I sat down to stream, and uh, after playing a few games of Warzone, rather ironically, we turned to watch the presidential debate. The first one of 2020, knowing perfectly well we were in for a shit show. But when it was all said and done, this was among the most bizarre things, if not the most bizarre thing, I've ever seen in my life. At least from a political standpoint. And that's really, 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 really saying something. Now, Chris is 21 years old. And I am 33 years old. And this is the first presidential election Chris will have ever voted in. That's correct. This will be my third time to vote. I have never picked a winner. I have voted straight ballot Republican. I have voted for a Clinton and wanted to die as I did it but had no choice. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I think both parties are a disaster and the two-party system has become a laughingstock. And nothing has ever confirmed that more than last night. The point is, Chris and I come from very different parts of life while having had similar upbringings. Chris representing Gen Z and me being aging millennial scum. But neither of us has a chosen political party that represents us, that we have a label that we attach ourselves to. So today our goal is to discuss last night's debate from the standpoint of Americans, as Americans, not Republicans, not Democrats, because this is the most important election in my lifetime thus far at at 33, and it's Chris's first chance to vote for president, and people need to be able to understand the nonsensical and often indecipherable babble spewed by our politicians during these debates, and we're going to do our best to help people understand the issues from an unbiased standpoint, looking at all sides and seeking information Yeah, out of the madness for all of us with the responsibility of voting this November. Yeah, looking at the debate on a surface level is about as productive as two mute children with no hands attempting to communicate with each other from across the playground as a nuclear bomb detonated in the background. That's so, fair. Yeah, and also, to your point about this being ever the first uh, election that I can vote for presidentially, I mean, I've voted in local elections before, but nothing obviously you're 21. On this, because I'm 21, but nothing on this level. Um, I missed out on it by like three months, I think. I had some friends of mine that could vote in the last election. But you regardless, voted in local elections before you could vote in the presidential, huh? Well, I, mean, I don't think I ever did that. I mean, just, I guess, twice now. Yeah. I mean, as soon as I could get my, I mean, the I was voter- just curious. It doesn't matter. A lot of people who haven't voted for a presidential election, they're, sure. you know, in their 30s and admitting to that now, I believe, was it what Odell Beckham Jr. recently came out? A prominent NFL athlete was like, I've never fucking voted, and clearly this is important, so I'm going to take my shot at it this year. It may have been Odell. I'm not sure. I believe it. It probably will, or I don't want to say probably, but I think I remember seeing him associated with that quote. Regardless, for this to be my first presidential election, the presidential election growing up was always built up to be this significant expression of freedom. And once you turn 18, you're able to, you know, play your role in being a part of American civilization, American society, and and being a part of bettering America. And so it definitely has been a little disheartening for me that the very first election that I have to vote for, or that I, that I have the opportunity to vote in to choose the next president of the United States is between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, two men that were born in a time where literally Jim Crow laws were still a thing, two white men that come from similar backgrounds enough, and both unbelievably wealthy people that are very non-relatable to the average person. It's been a struggle just from the get-go, and then this debate last night, just kind of brought all of those issues to the surface for everybody to see. Yeah, and as I've said in the past, I don't, I, in general, and you'll, you'll see this from my commentary today, I don't believe that a lot of the problems in this country can be fixed from the top. And I certainly don't believe that two dudes over the age of 70, uh, two white dudes are, are the answer to a lot of the problems that we have in this country. Um, but that being said, these are the two candidates we have to pick from. And we, we, you know, as a country that is a two-party system, 
one of these two dudes is going to be in office, uh, you know, as soon as at the beginning of next year. We don't know when it'll actually be based on the debate uh, last night, which we'll get to soon. We have no idea when this person will be actually confirmed, this next president or or continued uh, presidency will actually be confirmed. So also I would note, I woke up to a DM this morning from a high school listener. A comment. High school. Probably can't even vote yet. Comment, whatever. Telling me not to go, quote, full libtard again and make the show political, end quote. So no matter what I say here today, I'm aware there are those of you who will not hear me. I know that going in. Okay, and I'm going in anyway. And I wanted to also start by explaining to our younger listeners that the modern debate format, the one we see on television every year, has been broken my entire life. My entire life. They've absolutely never been productive. They've always simply been a place for candidates to parrot their same talking points and attacks on their opponents over and over and over, pre-written and repeated messaging and weird platform presentations. Then the 2016 election happened, and things started to shift, obviously, in the way debates functioned, and then last night happened. Because this shit, this was on a whole nother level. Like, I thought, I always was like, I remember asking my parents, like, like, Dad, what, Mom, what, how is this helpful? Like, how was that helpful? Like, I remember watching George W. Bush and, and Obama, and I remember watching Clinton and Bush before that, even as a younger child, and just being like, this isn't... I most it's what unless you're already highly educated on a lot of the issues that they're uh, attacking or talking about you you can't really tell what's happening and then Trump's style of debating and I'm doing quotes around debating he really doesn't do a debate he just sort of yells the entire time uh, makes it even more difficult to understand what's actually taking place so that that's always been an issue. It's just something that he ratcheted up so much with his behavior. With the, our President Trump ratcheted up so much with his behavior. He turned it to ten for sure. I mean, it. This thing was what an hour and a half long. Hour and a half. We yeah. watched it again this morning. Again, watched it live. Watched it again this morning. So packed with quotes that it's almost unimaginable. It's it, it, we. There was a point last night where Chris and I stopped. You know, an hour and a half probably after the debate had ended, we, we continued to Twitch stream and play our, play our video games, and we stopped, and we, we were like, man, that didn't feel real. Like, that feels very surreal now. Like, I we te- just we were watching some type of dystopian simulation or some shit. I texted a friend this morning. I said, I feel like I woke up from either a really bad fever dream or a really good SNL skit, because that's what it felt like. And you got, like, this is the thing I think everyone feared when Trump got elected, right? And we got small doses of it the first time through. I would argue that... That, that, it, that it just sort of derailed everything. All the normalcy started to go away, and we were like, whoa, 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 whoa. But honestly, the first time through, it, I, I expected it to get to the level it did last night. And when it never did, I was like, okay, maybe there really is a cap on the respect for the presidency that everybody has to uphold. So you're not really allowed to do certain things no matter what, no matter how crazy you are. Like, you can't get away with it. And then last, then last night happened. And it was that level where I, I didn't think anybody could go. Like, I didn't think anybody – from both sides, frankly. Yeah. Like, there was a point where Joe Biden told President Trump to shut up. Yeah. He said, just shut up, man. And, like, you – you just, we've lost the element, obviously, of common courtesy at this point. But, like, you don't tell the president to shut up. Like, that. maybe that's, a, that's a, 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 a dignity that Donald Trump has forfeited. But typically, that'd be a bad look for a presidential candidate to pre- tell the president of the United States to shut up on stage. Now, given the grand scheme of things last night, you could almost sweep it under the rug. People would think it's funny and they're making t-shirts. Yeah. And I would say on the flip side of that, it was interesting to see patternistically Biden, I was impressed with his ability to at least attempt to let Trump get through most of his two minute statements well. I wish and he then, wouldn't laugh so much. Yeah. but And then as soon as it would flip back to Biden, Trump would have something to say within the first sentence of Biden's statements. It, it, it got to be completely unfair to the point that the moderator, who's a Fox News guy, what was his name? Chris uh, Wallace, I believe. Yeah, was having to legitimately shut the president down. Like to, to, to almost to a rude degree because Trump was being so rude. 
he would not stop talking over Biden to the and I I got to credit the moderator for at least attempting to keep this thing somewhere in line. Yeah, I agree. Because I've never seen anybody in any debate format for any reason. I don't even think in a movie so greatly overstep the bounds of general conversation. And one of the things I said on Twitch was like, if I was having a conversation with another man, any man on earth, any living, breathing man, and every time I tried to speak, blah, 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 blah. they spoke blah, 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 over blah, blah, blah. me. Yeah. We are going to fight. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't treat people like that. Like, inevitably, if you do it enough, I'm going to hit you. Like, yeah. wait, wait, what do you expect? I don't, it, it, it is so infuriating to be interrupted over and over and over and over and over. We've all been there. We've all had arguments with somebody who was just like, I'm not even going to let you get a word in. And it's hell on earth. To have that happen to you on, a na on an international stage. With a moderator that is actively attempting to help when you get your statements out. both parties have agreed already to the rules of the debate. Yes. Which he tried to point out again and again and again and again. Why are you, why are you... You, why agree to the points? If you're the, and that's that's part of the brokenness of our debate system. You, they can just agree and then go out there and disagree. And There's not, no accountability. Sure. What, are you going to fine him? What do you, he's the fucking president. He paid $750 in taxes, fuck's sake. Nobody can apparently get away with fining this guy or getting him to give any amount of money for any reason. Um, but, which was another, that, that piece of it. Let's talk about that really quickly because sure. I want to explain something. Sure. A lot of people are really confused by Trump's $750 tax report thing, right? Trump's saying, well, I pay millions of dollars in taxes. The New York Times saying, no, he paid $750 in taxes. And the truth is somewhere in between. And that's that when you're a business owner and you're a corporate multi-millionaire, and, and when you get into the world that Donald Trump is in with all this lending and all this hundreds of millions of dollars in credit being given one way or the other in loans and business deals, he can. He's able to because of the way our tax code is written in this country. Sure, billionaires and business owners get a lot of write-offs. This incentivizes business. Is the idea, so guys like Trump get the best tax attorneys in the country, and they circumvent the tax code in a way that it legally gives them the ability to do this. Sure. So now I'm not saying he legally did this. I have no clue. I haven't looked at Trump's taxes. I'm not a tax attorney. I don't have the ability to break them down to that degree. What I'm telling you is that it's there not uncommon ways. for rich people, wealthy people, to be paying almost no money in this personal income tax bracket that you're seeing Trump get fried sure. for. That's not uncommon at all, and it speaks to a larger issue. And in this case, that larger issue could have at some point been addressed by the other man in this election. Isn't that something Austinites are known for? What? Kind of circumventing the tax codes and tax brackets a little bit. I don't know. I've just heard I that. Mean, probably. From, it's something okay. white people are known for, and the city is mostly white, uh, and tech money, which wouldn't shock me at all. But Joe Biden has been in, in, in politics forever. And in, in a lot of the time that Trump throws this out there, why didn't you do anything about it when you were there for 42 years, Joe? M most of the time he's saying that shit, it's like irrelevant, and it's stupid, and it's not even a point that should be made because the, 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 the way that politics have worked historically in America – that's just an insane thing to throw at someone. Sure, like, sure. And to accuse him of never having done anything is bonkers. Like, that's just an insane fucking thing to do. There are also levels to that that are just like, I mean, that there is the thing that Joe Bo he, Joe has made mistakes. Joe Biden is not a flawless candidate. No, Joe Biden has all. done things that I'm like, God damn, like in any other circumstances, this would make it really difficult for me to vote for you. You know? Exactly. No, I completely agree with you. There's, but there's it's just like... That's the issue. They're extremely flawed on both sides. Yes. Again, we're back to the choosing least of two evils. Which is the problem in this. Again, we have no choice here but to pick the lesser of two evils, in my opinion. Which, but again, when it all is said and done, I don't think that decision f should be difficult for most people if they're well informed enough on the issues. Um, and when it comes to the tax code, I don't understand why guys like Biden. Well, I do understand. And it's because of lobbyists why they've never done anything to fix those issues. And it's because they have to take money from billionaires and they have to take all the money from these corporations in order to have a shot at the elections, which is just a bigger part of the broken system problem. And it is something that is fair to ask Joe Biden. That being said, it would only be fair to ask Joe Biden if you were a normal fucking respectable human being, that of which Donald Trump is not. He isn't... 
worthy of asking questions about Hunter Biden, for example, which I don't even know the story about and I don't fucking care. What if Hunter Biden took money from Moscow or the mayor of Moscow's wife or whatever he accused, he just tries to throw out all these distractions. We well, already know Trump is one of the most ridiculously crooked business people in the history of organized business. That's documented, proven. It's not something he even tries to deflect from. It's it's a so once it's like. Well, my biggest the pot issue calling the kettle black thing to the worst degree possible, though, like you're not allowed to bring up random shit about his family or like his kid having a coke problem or like. And that was my what issue does that have with to that? do with anything. Your fucking brother died of alcoholism, I think. Like, what? Are we going to bring that up? What the fuck does that have to do with you? That was my biggest issue. I, I would say in my notes I had that that was probably the most disgusting part of the entire debate for me. And the Hunter Biden issue is completely separate than the way that Trump from the way that Trump brought up Hunter Biden. By, uh, uh, presidential candidate Joe Biden was discussing his son, Bo Biden, who served in the military and tragically passed away in 2015 from brain cancer. And he was basically memorializing him and saying, like, he was a great man that did great things in the military. When Bi or He when was Trump defending the military was because yeah. Trump has been quoted as calling them losers and basically suckers for joining the military. And he's a, a, a notorious draft dodger. Exactly. Yes. And then again, uh, those are not debatable things. Those are facts. And Trump used that moment to pivot to then bring up Hunter Biden and his coke problem that he had. Yeah, he and basically has stumbled. On. He brought yes. up the wrong kid. And then he goes, well, uh, I don't know about Bo, but I know about Hunter. I don't know then, about Bo, but I know about Hunter. And then just kept rolling with that and, and pointed to this. Who, and uh, you know. personally attacked Joe Biden's son and tried to pivot that into the Moscow issue, with had, which had nothing to do with the context of that conversation. But if you're asking yourself, why would Donald Trump do that? The answer is to bring up Russia. And to paint a larger picture of collusion and just confusion and... He wants all of that drama in the pot because it works for him. The more confusion there is, the more conspiracies, the more madness, the more social media fuel for him, the better. That's how he won his first election, and that is how he's going to try to win this one as well. Again, memes. Quick, shareable content <laughs> with and as when, much context and as that convey as much meaning as possible in the shortest and most efficient way of, of and when Chris says that, that, when Chris says that, he means when I when I see he said this to me yesterday, and I said, "What do you mean meme?" He said he won the first election with memes, and I was like, "I don't even remember him doing any memes. I don't remember any memes. Really, memes are like more of a, a liberal thing." Um, and he said, "No, he means like the lines and stuff." He'll say too, like Law and Order. That's a meme, basically. Like he throws out these quips, he makes these things into repeatable, easily digestible phrases and sentences that are very quickly communicating uh, either some points up front and then a lot of the time, as Biden put it last night, they're just like blatant racist dog whistles. And this is coming from the perspective of, uh, of uh, a generally, you know, undereducated in the terms of social issues white guy probably up until the last three months is the first time I've really made the effort to be as educated as I, as I need to be. And I'm obviously I'm not there yet. I don't know that that's an education that ever stops. But he like I, I, if you've done like one simple thing to try to understand some of the issues of the last six months, like watch the documentary, what, 13th, 13th. On, uh, on Netflix, then you've seen the footage of Richard Nixon using law and order and the call to law and order as a racist dog whistle to fuel the private prison system by filling it with black people. That was, that was how Richard Nixon used the phrase law and order. Now, whatever else you know or think about Richard Nixon aside, that there is a thing that occurred. It's a strategically documented thing. He used that law and order talking point and, and uh, whatever phrase to hammer home the need for p more police justice, more arrests, more uh, drug crime arrests, more, which is obviously taking mostly aim at minorities and, and underprivileged people. And in the case of him, it was to fill up these prisons that they had built. Nonviolent crimes. Nonviolent offenders. Trump is taking that directly. It's not even an attempt to 
hide the the, the racist no, nature an, of it. Exactly. It's an attempt to ignite the nostalgia factor of like the the make America great again mentality. Yeah, that whole thing. And it's like it's not even hidden. And that's a piece of it that during the first run, I was like, I kind of get what he's doing. But now I'm like, oh, well, shit, dude. It gives him the ability to say things and with the context. that mean one thing to some people and an entirely different thing to another. Exactly. Beca and with the context when he says things like, stand by, proud boys, and that entire line of dialogue <laughs> in which he we'll get to did that. not diffuse or refute white supremacy. Um, when he doesn't do things like that and then says double speak things like the law and order, it's even it, it, more it's sin obvious. Exactly. It it's even it's more sins obvious. are very like, apparent and transparent message. And now when I say that two people receive the message and get two different things, I mean this. There are suburban moms who hear him say law and order and go, Oh, that's good. I got three fucking kids. Yeah. I want the police to be around. I don't want to defund the police. I'm not even sure what that means. I, I like that. I like that. And then there are racist, extremely bigoted, fucked up individuals who hear that shit and are like, yes, keep it fucking going. Lock them up. Keep locking them up. Keep dropping the knee. Keep fucking shooting. Don't stop. And that's a crowd that's ignited by Trump's, what those are called, racist dog whistles. And that's something that he, I didn't think he would shamelessly do. I also didn't think he would make a sexual innuendo in, during the debate, but he did that as well. He made a joke about finishing. He never lets anybody finish, and Trump said, oh, "I let people finish. Uh, uh, no, I, I can assure people you, many, many people disagree with that." This was within, that was within like what the first six people, and a half minutes. People love to finish. Six and a half minutes of the debate. I mean, that was early. Many people are finishing. Let me tell you, everybody that I, every woman I've ever been with has finished. They were all finishers. Finishers are the like some of them squirters, some of them none, but all finishers. They've never not finished. You can't be around Donald Trump and not finish. Everybody knows. Everybody, everybody's. You at home finishing right now, aren't you? <laughs> oh, what did you bring up that I said we'd life. get to in a little bit? Um, Proud Boys. So when he was asked directly, when Don, when when, and this was a weird moment because typically a a moderator doesn't single out a candidate in this fashion. I will say, Chris, but it's Wallace... become so much of a fucking issue. Well, With Donald Trump dog whistling and refusing to acknowledge or speak to any of the racism that occurs in this country, that he had to directly <laughs> address him. Like, he had no choice but to say, will you directly tell these people that are causing problems to fucking stop? Which is cra That's a crazy moment in American history for a debater to have to ask the President of the United States if he will directly stand against white supremacy and racist acts of violence in this country, and he flatly refused. That's not a right-wing view or a left-wing view or a central view or a liberal view or a, an extremist view. It's what happened. He directly refused. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. He declined. Yeah, no, he declined. Are you willing, said, Wallace asked, are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence or the number of these cities as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland? And Trump said, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right. But I'm willing to do anything. I want to see peace. And Wallace said, then do it, sir. Biden said, do it, do it, say it. And Trump said, you, you want to call them? It was a very awkward moment. He's like, you want to you want to call them? What what do you want me to call them? Give me a name. And Biden yelled out, Proud Boys. And Trump goes, Proud Boys, stand back and stand by. Which he obviously didn't mean to say. But holy fucking balls. You literally couldn't m butcher that moment more horribly. And I, and I wonder if you're, because I'm obviously not a Donald Trump supporter. What what does that mean to you? That moment. What does that mean to you? What does that say? For him to not only refuse to directly condemn racism and white supremacy, which he stokes on a regular basis in in our faces, to a, an outright refusal to do it when called out by the moderator, 
but then to accidentally come off as the fucking leader of the group. Stand by. Stand back and stand by. Stand by implies wait for what's coming next. Which again, no? I would absolutely say was a misspoken line by Donald Trump. It'll also be probably the most it, quoted line. Yes, it doesn't even it, matter. It doesn't at this matter. Point. And it and it, you know what? It's funny because when he says stupid shit like that, and then the left media will run with it, and then he'll say, "Look, it was obviously a misquote. Look how the left wing media tries to paint me. All uh, these, all uh, these left, uh, what do they, what does he call them? Extremist liberals. All they do is try to take one thing and spin it, and then we're fucked again." So no, I want to say directly, I don't think he meant to say that. But to, for him to not answer the question and then accidentally come off as the literal fucking leader was just this unbelievable moment of like, oh my God, this guy literally has no intention of fixing any of the social issues we're seeing in 2020. Well, he continued to he say that... He enjoys them as a... Uh, they benefit him. As a, that's what I was going to say. He continued to call out Biden for not being able to say certain things or not saying certain things because he would lose his, quote, radical left supporters. He told them but he wouldn't say the words law and order, which eventually he did he say. He did say the words law and order, regardless. But and then he goes, um, "Oh, you've left, you've lost him, Jeff. You've Biden lost never the said it. I was surprised that Biden never said anything to Trump about not saying something about his far right supporters of the white supremacists, because that's what it seems that he's doing here, not imply or not straight up denouncing white supremacy, because he knows there is a. I don't know what the percentage is, but obviously, the people that align on that side are probably voting for Trump. I would pretty much guarantee that. And now let let me let me say this for Joe Biden, in a lack of a attack there, for example. They have got to get this dude better zingers, better lines for Biden. His writers are trash. If seriously the best they can get this man is shut up and you're a clown, which is like level one insults that anybody could come up with those two lines, a fucking child could come up with those lines, give him zingers. Like I'm talking like Clint Eastwood style lines like, why don't you help your Manhattan bread casino owning ass to a science book because you're sounding like a damn fool, Donald? Like, give him shit to say. I don't fucking know. This isn't my job. But like him, that old that old man going up there and 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 hitting him soft with this soft stuff. Trump is breaking every rule in the book. If you're gonna come with shut up, then come up with some clever shit. Don't stoop down to his little flinging a teenage argument level like give the dude some actual good shit to say what the fuck was that because the only thing that i could i mean i could see people coming out of that go, that went into it very firm trump supporters coming out of that thinking that trump won because of his aggressive nature towards biden and I how he most, got more talking points across right etc etc et my impression from most of the trump supporters i know is that they were generally disgusted with the entire thing and that's trump supporters who are trump i mean trump supporters i don't mean guys who are maybe going to vote for biden they're sure. going to vote for trump and and their imp the impression i got from them observing the text group last night that i'm in with them was that they were disgusted yeah I mean, uh, just on the surface base level, this is something that the entire world was watching to see where the U.S. is going to go from here after four years of Donald Trump in, as the president. Are we going to stick with him or will we be parting ways and going in a different direction? And the world saw this. And it was embarrassing as an American for this to be the display of the people running for the highest position this country has to offer in terms of political positioning. It was sad. It was it was terrifying to watch and extremely disheartening as somebody that's only 21 years old in this country and that's lived here his whole life and that's been told by so many people growing up that it's a blessing to live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I completely agree with that. But when there's people at the top that that have such a lack of care of what it seems like, like Trump never directly talked to the camera like he was talking to me as an American. Trump's the president. He's been the president for, for three and a half years or whatever. Yes. So this is nothing new. But like, you saying last Biden night, also disappointed you as in the way he behaved? I would say. I mean, just I would say in general. I mean, well, just because of how the debate went on as a whole, there was not much that he could do. I would say, but he. I mean, he didn't necessarily inspire. I think hope. he's got to do a better job than he. That's did. what I'm saying. He didn't necessarily inspire hope that he's going to bring. Here's here's a problem for me. A change, a massive change, or something like that. He's how the fuck did Joe Biden walk into this debate? With no response to, you've been there 42 years, Joe. How haven't you, why haven't you done anything before? They had to have known Mans was going to get hit with that over and over and over. He's going to continue to get hit with that. That's a question I want an answer to. 
as a, as a lifelong politician, why should we have any faith that you're going to do anything differently? Now, again, in my case, I'm already I'm, I'm voting for Joe Biden before this debate took place anyway, because I assumed that this is what we were going to be looking at. And I wasn't wrong in that assumption. So it's not that's not it's not going to sway me one way or the other. But as I'm watching the debates, I'm thinking to myself, what could either candidate do to sway people from one side to the other? And when I'm watching Joe Biden not have a response to why haven't you done it in 42 years, Joe? I immediately recognize that as a moment that Trump secured his base. Sure. When he says, uh, citing Senator Biden at the time's support for the 1994 crime bill, you've treated the black community about as bad as anybody in this country. I need a response to that. Sure. And I didn't get one. And I mean, obviously, part of the problem was that when Biden would try to respond to things, Trump would interrupt over and over and over and over and over, which brings Biden to say, well, it's hard to get any words in with this clown, which again was another historic moment. That's a former vice president of the United States calling the former, the, uh, the, uh, the current sitting president of the United States a clown, <laughs> twice, I might add, during, uh, on national live television, international. He called him a clown. And ironically, he is mad orange. Like, he just has hella face paint on. He is a little clown-like. Uh, his side profile is just so iconic. I don't understand how his hair works like that. It's like Johnny Bravo hair. Yo, it, when it's he, the like... worst branding and imaging in the history of marketing. And for some reason, people Love cannot it. get enough of this Love shit. It. His suits don't fit. His hair is trash. He sold you fucking steaks at Sharper Image. What is happening? Shitty steaks at Sharper Image. Shitty I don't, steaks. I don't get the vibe. Nothing about this dude hits me as like, I want that. Or like, like <laughs> respectable. That's the thing. It's lacking in respectability. Even if he had all the success that he says he's had and that he presents as have, having had, which he has not, there's no respectability to it. I don't just like people because they're rich. That's fucking insane. What? It, the fact that that argument even works for people is bonkers. I've crushed it with money. I have so much money. Vote for me. That's not an argument. I think. Any, what do you? What do you I, don't, I know plenty of rich people who are awful. I think it's because people see him as like winning. The American dream, the American success story. He's nothing about him is in any way, shape, or form normal. He's a Northeastern elitist Manhattan trust fund baby. How the fuck does that connect with the, the everyday conservative it doesn't make sense to me there's such a there's such a wide gap between the two that's the magic of trump to me really good brand that's the thing he's been able to but it's the that's what i'm saying it's the worst branding ever but it's like but he's got like the, the best he's got like the fuck you mentality like i'm gonna do this regardless of what somebody else yeah, says but like typically the fuck you mentality to like the fratty fucking like preppy image is like also yo i know where to buy my suits you know, and I know where to get a steak, and it sure as fuck isn't the sharper image. Like, he doesn't fit the 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 cool vibe. But on the other end, I think he's, like, the epitome of American consumerism. Like, he, he is, is literally sure. the god, of, like, the, like, Jesus figure of American consumerism. And, the tr and, like, the trashy side of it is almost what appeals to, I guess, lower-income conservatives. I guess so. I guess. Like, the fact that his suit doesn't fit, they don't fucking care. No. They're just like the if fact he got his fucking tie on stage. Hangs past his dick, they don't care for some reason. No, I think they every like time I see him out there with a tie. I'm like, first of all, I bet on which fucking color tie both these idiots would wear. Black. Neither like of straight. them wore the correct color. Well, Biden's was blue, but it was blue with white stripes. Trump's was Did red. You still get that? No, no, no. They both. No. I think they both. It were had losers. to be solid because they were striped. If, yeah, I, if I'm not mistaken, fuck. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how those prop bets ended. I've been too obviously focused on the content of the debate to go check the bets, but. Uh, I mean, it was just, it was just, a, this was a total shit show. Like he didn't, the president not allowing the other candidate to speak freely really, you know, hampered our ability as voters to get what we needed out of this, which is nice. It's just, it's not what you want. Um, Biden said the fact is that everything he is saying so far is simply a lie. I'm not here to call out his lies. Everybody knows he's a liar. That was very early on in the debate. I, I that struck, there's another moment that struck me because, no, Joe, not everybody does know he's a liar. And this has been a problem with the Democratic Party since I've been old enough to understand it. They assume that everybody sees this. Everybody knows he's a liar. No, 
They don't. That's the problem. We need you to fucking explain it to us. Why is he a liar? Point out the lies. Tell us when he's lying. Then do something about it. Like, there's no real feel for that. Like, it's it's just bizarre to me. The, and then he's allowed to just say whatever he wants and continue lying. There's no accountability. Where in the system is the accountability? I think the I think they're relying on the. I mean, how I just went this morning. If you're and relying up on the American public though to like to to, to decipher for themselves, man, that way bye bye long ago. Yeah, which is a shame. And to the this kind of wrapped in my mind wraps back to the point that we opened with with not being political in 2020. I think we've kind of lost the, you have to be political, in my personal opinion. And if you have the ability to be apolitical, that's because the current politics of today, today's society, regardless of which side comes out on top, will not affect your day-to-day -day lifestyle, which is a privilege that not everybody has. This election... Which also, sh it just shouldn't be a thing. That's the thing that I enjoyed that, that shouldn't be a thing. I mean, that's... What? If your life is so unaffected by the elections that you just don't give a shit... It's because you're benefiting from the system. And often, and I'm not saying always, but oftentimes it's because you're benefiting from the system uh, that you're not paying attention to. And, and other people are getting fucked. If you care about the people around you and, and the people that are going through this life with you on this earth, and specifically in this country in the case of this election, then you have to care about politics because you have to care about people. Yeah. So if you don't care about politics right now, it's more of you not caring about people than it is you not caring about politics. Yeah, there are also levels to that. Like, understand, you know, I mean, when I was your age, for example, when I was 21, when I was 18, for example, I didn't, I, I mean, still at 33, there's so much about our country. It's such a complicated fucking shitstorm that you have to have a feel for and an understanding for to really understand what we're talking about with these presidential elections. That, like, there were multiple that I participated in on a semi-ignorant level. Like... Which is a thing, though. Sure. And that's part of what we're trying to address today is like is, is why that's a problem and how we can fix it. And, and it, why last night was so problematic in turning that, right? Because yeah. this sure as fuck didn't help any 18-year-old. I would agree. But politically, I would argue in today's day and age, you know, with I, the access of information... Yeah, at it's a, a, at it's a, a weird like, thing to say, I'm not political, because well, you should be. It's, it's literally your responsibility... At this point, I'm just saying there's that not really, is no longer a window that it should be open. And there's no excuse for ignorance anymore with the the any information you could ever ask for at your fingertips. Now it becomes more difficult in 2020 with you know biased news on both sides. But again, I would say I mean you have to dig deeper and look deeper. And, and I mean well, I even do beyond think that, it's, it's just on a base level, if you live in a country that is a democracy that relies upon a free vote to decide the candidates who will represent the citizenry, you have the responsibility to vote. Yeah. And, and if you vote without responsible knowledge, yes. if you vote irresponsibly, you're still fucking up, which is something that I, have, I admittedly have done in the past. So it's, it's, that's what we're trying to address today is that gap also. That there are a lot of us, and whether it's because we're just not educated enough or we haven't had a li enough life experience where we don't understand the weight of what we're looking at. And and today is an effort to to close that gap a little bit for all of us, too. Um, there was a point where, again, Biden got interrupted by Trump and he said, will you shut up, man? This is so unpresidential. And while I agree with that, I think that's the thing people do know. I'm not here to not I'm not here to call out your lies. Everybody knows you're a liar. I disagree. I think you are here to call out the lies. Please point out the lies, sir. I I think everybody knows he's unpresidential. You don't need to tell us that. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody that voted for him cares that he's unpresidential. That's what they like about him. Another Biden whiff. And this is something they keep get, he he keeps trying to get away with analogies that at his age he no longer has the ability to pull off. You should get out of your bunker and get out of the sand trap and the, and the golf course and go in the Oval Office and together Democrats and Republicans and fund what needs to be done now to save lives. Like, Joe. It could have been better. Why are you trying to get slick with that? Yeah, the golf better. metaphor dog just. So do you think that's why they're trying to keep his zingers a little simple? Because I mean. No, I mean, that's him. That's like the way he has sort of always talked and he's always come up with. He's, he's, he's had gaffes his whole career. You can look up 
50 minutes of Joe Biden misquotes and silly sayings in well, a similar way that you could with George W. Bush. He just misspeaks a lot. I've heard he – I saw sources last night saying that he did have a diagnosed speech impediment at some point, but I would like to confirm that. No idea about that. Uh, would love to be confirmed on that as well. But regardless, I have watched him for— He's struggled with a speech impediment since childhood. So I've watched him since— bef- I mean, I've, I've been aware of him since before the first run that Obama took. Um, but I watched him closely since then, obviously since his first term as vice president of the United States. And I can tell you that as a non-doctor, regular person with a, I hope, normal brain capacity— the man has lost a step or two sure. mentally. Sure. He has slipped. He cannot speak at the at, in the way he once could. He slips up more. He's old. He's old as fuck. He's 77 or 74. One of the They're two. Both one is 77. Old as fuck. One is, yeah. It's part of the problem with this situation is that he's 77. That's one of the things I just have to go, yes, he is probably too old for this job. But I trust him to make better decisions than this other guy still, unfortunately. And I think he'll put better people around him that'll be that'll be younger and and more in touch with what's going on as well. Um, but yeah, just 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 bizarre to watch a dude who I'm like I don't even know if you should like be legally allowed to run based on. But then even the dumbest thing that Joe Biden says, Trump says something that insane twenty times a day. We're just so used to it now that it doesn't matter. And that's one of the most amazing things about his presidency that I've discussed repeatedly is that. He's found a way to make these what would be career ending, not gaffes, career ending catastrophes for normal people and politicians are things that Trump simply sweeps under the rug. And it's I've never seen anybody pull it off. The way he does, it's amazing. He is uncancelable. So there was a. He literally is president of the United States during cancel culture, and is on tape, videotape, talking about how he just go up to women and kiss them and grab them by the pussy because he's famous and he can get away with it on tape. And that was before he got elected. Yeah. During cancel culture. Yeah. He's uncancelable. It's amazing. It's because he a lot like his supporters are the opposite of the people that are behind cancel culture. Usually, I would argue. Yeah, until to well, yeah, uh, I've you seen, know what I seen, mean. We've seen this weirdly swing both ways recently. Oh, that's very true. But have you ever heard of the presidential candidate Howard Dean? He ran for president in two thousand four. You talking about? Bah! Yes, I am. Yes, of course I've heard of the president. So he candidate was one Howard of the Dean first then. presidents. That are the first candidates that attempted to really use the internet to run for president. And that meme of him crushed his campaign. It was over. That ended it. Ruined. Well, Chappelle, done. Dave Chappelle did this fool hard. <laughs> he did a sketch. Like on Chappelle's show, he went out on stage and he's like, We're going to go to Vermont and we're going to go to Delaware and we're going to go to Idaho and bah! But Trump has taken moments exponentially more cringeworthy or memeable than that and have turned them into a positive that has somehow created more supporters of him. Remember when he made fun of a handicapped person? Yes. Dude, Remember, like if my black I made friend, fun of, my African American If fellow, I made fun of him, one handicapped person right now in the manner in which Trump did, my job and company would cease to exist by the end of the month. He's president of the United States. Yes. It is absolutely bonkers how the rules have ceased to apply to this dude. It's amazing, and it, it is everything unpresidential about it. And I, it's it's just wild to watch unfold on a stage like this where we're supposed to be getting at least, at least give me the fake version of the 90s with the, you know, polite lies. This is just... Little kids are watching this and shit, man. What the fuck? You, you can't even have your little kids. Well, you couldn't have your kid. This would be a bad influence for an eight-year-old. That's what I'm saying. This Imagine. how people are supposed to treat each other? Yeah. Eek. Trump's yeah. failure to recognize the uh, the racial issues in a proper way was probably if if there was any chance, if there was a zero point zero 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 one percent chance that Trump could get my vote. 
it would have been based on him addressing race in a way that finally was worthy of what needs to be addressed. He obviously completely failed to do that while Biden said things like, yes, there is systematic or there's systemic injustice in this country in education and work and in law enforcement and the way in which it is enforced. And I agree with all three of those things where Donald Trump directly says he does not agree, especially in the way that education is being handled. And while there are people in the Democratic Party who are trying to reshape some of the educational platforms in this country to more accurately reflect uh, what I would call is real American history or to put it in not such a like every all the history I was taught as a small child shapes America up to be a blameless, victimless promised land of, of glory and riches where we went through some bumps in the road to get here. not even that I didn't we didn't even get that version. No bumps in the road. Nothing was framed up as negative. Sure. Not a nuclear bomb, not a Thanksgiving, not a nothing at all, bro. Everything was hunky dory. It was all painted up in a cartoony fucking. Obviously, that is unhealthy and unproductive, and it ends up harming a lot of different communities in this country who have been stepped on, beaten down, and enslaved over the course of this country's growth. So it's a problem that needs to be fixed. Trump directly said no. I don't want them to change any of this. I believe they're changing to, to tr try to teach people to hate America. That's patently insane. Why the fuck would any political party in America want to teach its citizenry to hate its own country? They're simply trying to educate people properly because in Trump's head, America is rich white people. That's what he means. He doesn't want people to be taught to hate rich white people. I would say it's fairly telling that he's so adamant on that point because in his mind it seems that if we change the system of education that means people are going to hate me and what I'm doing which that's a little telling. Do you get what I'm saying? If people are able to make that connection there there's probably an issue and there probably is it's a connection like, to be made. It's like guys like Howard Stern, his old buddy have said he never meant to do this. It was a fucking political or it was a marketing campaign, basically. He accidentally became president. He has no fucking clue what he's doing. It's a popularity contest, and the only thing that matters to him is his image and his brand. That's it. And you can even see it in the shit that he says and does and brings up constantly. He's always talking about things that he's... And he always, I mean, brings, look up, at he always brings up companies that you can tell, like his fucking daughter Johnson must own stock in Johnson & Johnson. Yeah. And these, like, it's just constant shit where I'm like, that's borderline illegal. That's borderline illegal. That's really shady. Like, what? And Bro, shit, and it's, like, again, I'm not coming from a standpoint of, like, having a team here. I'm, no. I'm Team America, and I'm yeah. sitting here watching this goon, and I'm going, Nah. Well, things like also when the the moderator brought up the point of his outdoor rallies that have had 15,000 people or so there recently. They told and Trump outdoors used great. They told us outdoors have been very good. Trump used it as a point to brag about his numbers and the lack of numbers at Joe Biden's rallies. Joe, you can't and get then, any crowds. Joe, you, can't get, you couldn't get a single crowd. Not one crowd, Joe. Of course not because people aren't going to come – Stand side by side with 10,000 people right now. That makes a little bit of sense. I love when they go, proceeds, they go, why are you even having crowds? And he goes, people want to hear what I have to say. Yeah. And then he proceeds Bro, to. You're aware of television. Is a, you're on it right now. Make fun of Joe wearing big masks. <laughs> he wears masks hey, all hey, the time. Hey, maybe look, too often. Hey, look at me. Maybe. I've, got a, I've got a mask And right his here, mask, though. big mask. Every huge time mask. I see him come out, he's got a mask on the size of 15 people's heads put together. What's that about? What's with his huge mask? Look at the size of his mask. It's he's enormous. always wearing masks. Many Probably when he are, doesn't need to wear masks. Many mask. people are saying it's the biggest mask anyone's ever worn. What's with that, Joe? Joe, explain your gigantic mask, your comically large mask. As if he has a fucking foam cowboy hat on. The biggest mask I've ever seen. What a pussy. What a pussy. Look at him. What Trump a pussy. reminded me of Doug Dimondo How night. could you vote for a guy who wears an enormously comically large mask? I have mine in my pocket. Who cares? What? the fuck was the size of the mask about? I like to think that he was like walking out on stage and one of his secretaries was like, hey, hey, put this in your pocket so you can show people that you have a mask on you at all times. Oh, that's the move for these people. They carry it around in their pocket when they're told, where's your mask? They flash it and they put it right back. It's what my boy who got banned from CVS does. <laughs> he got banned from CVS because he went one day with no mask on and they told him, "Not if you come back again, you're done. He came back the next day. No mask. Why? He's a QAnon dude. Why? Because he doesn't believe coronavirus is real. Oh, okay. It's a hoax. 
sure. and this is all part of the fucking liberal uh, um, agenda. No, nah, the liberal elitist billionaire pedophile rings plan, dude. This is all part of their plan. And all this is just about discrediting Donald Trump. It's all about Trump. That's the crazy shit he got them to believe. That's that the crazy this- shit. That this is somehow all about him. They want to bring me down. They want to take me down. It's just about me. Bro, who the fuck even are you? You weren't even in this boat till three and a half years. You just jumped in. What? You were, you're, a, you're a casino owning reality television star. That's so stakes. It is not all about you, I assure you. That sharper image. But his people be- believe that shit. They believe that all the Dems want to do, all the liberals want to do, all the left wants to do is take down Donald Trump. That's it. It's all this game. And they buy into this narrative, and all the issues get pushed aside. It's bizarre. Yeah, there was no platform. It's pretty simple manipulation, which is sad. We're the most sheep-ass motherfuckers of all time. Maybe not of all time. Plenty of human beings been sheep over the... Hey, man. <laughs> okay, that's true. That's true. That's very valid. If you go back and look at history, there's been some moments where you're like... Eh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you guys... You guys could have done better here. Could have done better. Biden directly called out Trump's use of, uh, he said, this is a president who has used everything as a dog whistle to try to generate racist hatred, racist division. That's the thing I agree with that I have, uh, you know, I don't need uh, a CNN or an MSNBC to fucking point out for me. I just watch the guy speak. I watch the way he operates on Twitter. And I'm an intelligent human being. And I see what he's doing. And he's exactly right on that point. And that to me, again, that's a deal breaker, bro. That's not like a, well, let's see what else he has to say. It's over after that for me. Like, if you're using your status as president of the United States to incite hatred and violence in my country, you're done to me. Like, there isn't anything else that can excuse that. No amount of economic booming, no amount of stock marketing, no amount of fucking tax cuts. I don't give a shit after that point. Because those shouldn't even shouldn't even be comparable. I mean, that's well, and then you've, you've already lost the entire side. point of the country. Exactly, was freedom for all, in words only, but still that was the idea. Equal equality for all, freedom for all, and you've already abandoned that. Then you're out. If you can't even recognize that racism is an issue, you're out. If you can't even try. To be a good example for people. Maybe we don't know about masks, man. Maybe some people have gone back and forth and flip-flopped. I'm not a fucking scientist. But the fact is, it's been pretty much proven that if more people wore masks, more lives would be saved. If you can't even wear a mask, if you mock the other dude for wearing a mask, if you can't even just be an example for young people, for for our country, we... We got no role model here, man. This isn't an I. This isn't somebody we can have our children look up to with basic human decency. He's a bullying a fucking a, a dude he calls Sleepy Joe, who's worked for forty plus years uh, trying to make our country a better place. Has he always done a good job? No, absolutely not. But Jesus Christ, nobody deserves to be treated that way. In a, in a presidential debate. I would say at least Joe has respect for the position, it seems. He tried to respect it. He got to a point where he definitely disrespected it. But I mean, when Trump comes in and says things like you Pocahontas, when Emily Warren isn't even there. Yeah, he threw out the window. But that's what I'm saying. You, It's like, and again, one of the things I said last week was like, the Democrats have to come out and do things differently. Trump will take off the gloves. Oh, yeah. We know that. Yeah. Will they be willing to? And they did a little bit. Like, he said some shit that I was like, oh, fuck. He called him Putin's puppy. Still refuses to say anything to Putin about the bounty on the heads of American soldiers. Called him out for that. That was interesting. Um, he called him out directly for... Uh, Biden called out Trump for his, 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 his obvious failings in the coronavirus, the COVID situation, the failure to acknowledge it, the fact that he said it would be gone by Easter, that the warm weather would come and it would miraculously go away like a miracle, all that was a direct quote. He claimed multiple times, at least two, could have been more, Trump said the words, we will have a vaccine in weeks. Weeks. That is an unconfirmed, I've looked everywhere that I can find, I can find no sources that say uh, anything about a vaccine in weeks. When the moderator told him factually... Here's what we've been told by Pfizer, by these companies, and they've said at the bare minimum this amount of time. And Trump was like, no, sooner. And you know why? And he quotes, and again, this is important. This is important. Why? 
Why do you think he lied about that? Why do you think he did that right there? Um, because he can say that he's doing something. Stock market. Mm. It's the only fucking reason. The stock market. Because the more scared people are, the war- more fucked up they think the last couple months of the year will be, the more fucked up the stock market's going to get. October's already going to be crazy as hell. The more faith people have in Trump and his ability to get us a cure or, or a, I'm sorry, a vaccine, vaccine, the better the stock market will do. And that is the only reason he says it. He does not care about anything else. There's no other angle. It's as simple as that. Donald Trump knows the number one thing he has going for him is the economy and the stock market and the 401ks, which he directly cited. And you know why? That's what middle class and upper middle class and rich and wealthy white people want to see. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only reason. The only reason he doesn't wear a mask. The only reason... That he says the shit he says about COVID to keep people calm. The same thing he's been now quoted as saying that he didn't tell us earlier. It's because he didn't want the economy to crash. And frankly, as Biden put it on the other foot, there is no economy overcoming the economy. And the, there's no you can avoid it. You can put it off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can yeah, lie yeah, to yeah. people and do what we're doing and, and keep the stock market. high. But there's going to be a, a dip. Yeah, there's a bubble like undoubtedly the stock market being where it is from my general not knowing dick about anything standpoint does not reflect the current economy. It, it, it literally is impossible that it would or could based on the fact that most of our economy isn't open or is functioning at a minimal percentage. That concerns me a great deal. I think you can put that off for a certain amount of time, but eventually you deal with the consequences. Whereas with Biden, will we face them more up front? Directly, yes. Probably. We will. But I would argue that's better than a slow burn or a slow or choke a living off. a lie. I'm not, or like the only, the, you know, the only people who benefit from it end up being the billionaires again because they know when to cut it off or dip or whatever the fuck. Or they have the money to back it like up. Like Joe Schmo, be- who makes six grand because he bought some stock in, in, in you know, Peloton. It's not going to matter when shit hits the fan. Yeah. And the increase in jobs he speaks to is only there because of the decrease that happened prior to that as a result of his failure, in my opinion, to do enough to control COVID in the first place. Sure. A failure to recognize that we needed PPE that he sent to China. A failure to shut things off in, in, a, in a proper fashion. Like, a failure to make sure that our medical community was equipped to handle these types of issues, which is something that we knew we would inevitably have. And he blames Biden as well, saying that if he was in position, Biden would have allowed millions of people to die. Would have been way worse, Joe. It would have been way more people would have died if it was you, Joe. I'm not saying Biden would have done exponentially better. He, he might have done worse, but I don't think it's fair at all to say millions would have died. Like, what worse could he have done to create millions of deaths? Like, it's, I just don't see. There's no. It's it's blanket statement after blanket statement, quoting blanket expert and blanket company and many blanket people are policy. saying it was the smart thing to do. Everybody, Over, all of the even the Democrats, all of the Democratic police chiefs, they're all saying it was genius. And the, when he was talking about the Supreme Court nominee, Barrett, he was saying many liberal experts say that she's excellent. Many liberals, many, many hard liberals say that she's excellent. Well, who? who? Who are the experts you're, ta- you're speaking to? What are the numbers? What are the facts? He doesn't Here's present one. anything specifically. He no, lays the out these massive it's the blanket it's, statements. It's all about feeding the already existing narrative. Here's one, the quote. The top 10 cities and just about the top four... The top 10 cities and just about the top 40 cities are run by Democrats, in many cases, radical left, and they've got you wrapped around their finger, Joe, to a point where you don't want to say anything about law and order. And I'll tell you what, the people of this country want and demand law and order, and you're afraid to even say it, which he then inevitably said. Um, It's just like, you just say, it's like that. Here's the narrative. Right wing and Republican people believe and are scared of what they see as radical left, which they see in, in things like Portland, okay? That's what they're afraid of. They don't want that in their cities. They don't want to defund the police. They don't want to lose police officers. They don't want to, the police officers to have their riot gear taken away for whatever reason. Uh, they, they, their shields. They don't want any of that. They see what they see what happens in some of these cities that Trump is able to label as uh, radical left and to blame these Democratic mayors and to paint it as this picture of anarchy and Antifa and all that shit. 
He's got that shit all up in their heads, and they believe that that's legitimately what's going to happen sure, if Joe sure, Biden sure. becomes president. That that he won't even recognize law and order. That he doesn't have a single police organization backing him. Which again, I had to explain on the stream last night. A police organization. What he means by that is the unions and the groups that financially back and support police officers. Which in this case. If they are raising money to put toward a presidential candidate that looks out for the needs of those officers and they're picking between a man who has vowed to not defund the police and a man who has said he wants to help take some money and put it in better places and do things with the police departments differently. And as he put it last night, have more like uh, community mental health training, community mental health policing. Commu yes, all those things then of course the police departments are going to put their union money and their organized money toward the candidate who Says will get them the most money. Yeah. Ipso facto, duh, Biden doesn't have a whole bunch of police chiefs and organizations coming out and saying, we support Joe Biden because they want Trump is money. the guy that's going to get them more money. Yeah. Um, and frankly, that's a whole other issue. But like for Trump to throw that at him as if it was like a, a knock – I don't think you have a single police organization. Can you even name one? Like, well, no shit he doesn't have one because he's trying to fix the police organizations and a lot of these organizations don't want to admit they're flawed. A lot of them don't want to. And a lot of them are on the defensive and some of them rightfully so. Some of them <laughs> not rightfully so. It's, it's just a fucking mess. And all in all, for us to have like what should have been a moment in history for a shift of some kind for that shift to just be towards more shittiness that's the part that's embarrassing to me is that i don't feel like this did anything for anybody and i'd love to hear from people who are listening who had last night that, that, that last night genuinely shifted your vote if you were a trump voter and you were and you came out of this saying i'm going to vote for biden or you were going to vote for biden and you left it saying i'm going to vote for trump i'd love to hear from you i don't think there's very many people that that happened with um I mean, it just, it just seems so straight. It's like, with every, I don't know if we're going to have the other two. They're supposed to have two more. Biden's party said last night that they still plan on doing the remaining okay. of two. And I'm assuming. I just imagine they'd be very repetitive. I'm assuming if Biden's going to do it, there's no way Trump couldn't do it. So, because yeah. he, he's not going to back down. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I like if it come if if the second one rolls around and we get the exact same thing, it, which feels like it's what's going to happen. I feel like on Biden's end, his campaign has to come in a little bit more prepared, knowing exactly what they could expect. I mean, I can't expect Trump could come out any more aggressive than that. So I so mean, like, at yeah, least they kind of know. Who do you think won? <laughs> because that's how they usually want to do these. Well, there was a winner and a loser. It was a debate, right? So who won? If anyone, I guess Biden, because Trump beat himself. Like, I don't think what he did made any of his supporters feel necessarily better about tr Trump in general. I mean, I would say just I, I looking didn't get at the how, he it did. just how he treated Biden, even regardless of titles, regardless of topic, just how he treated him on a debate stage. I can't imagine that looked good in anyone's eyes. So I guess if I had to pick a winner, it'd have to be Biden. We are the loser. Yeah, we are definitely the losers. Um, But I, I, I do think Trump, lost the debate by over attacking and by coming off as unhinged and fucking just if if unpresidential was a thing that he was still able to qualify for he certainly achieved that i mean i, I it was a disaster trump definitely did more to hurt himself than he did to hurt joe biden uh, but biden did not crush this he crushed moments but he was often jostled by Trump's attacks. Uh, he had moments where he was well-spoken and rock solid. And then he had moments where he slipped and his age showed big time. And he had moments where he allowed frustration or strategy, one of the two, it was hard to tell, to bring him down to Trump's level, telling him to shut up, calling him a clown. Uh, things that typically, I want to see him stand up to Trump, don't get me wrong. But again, those are things that, in my opinion, are unbecoming of a leader. A leader, especially a, a, the most important leader in the free world to me, it, it should not be stooping to that level of behavior. And I understand for all the, the Democrats listening who are like, how could you not? L look, no, you had that's the job. That's the job to represent this country to the best of your ability. That's the job. And, and if you end up calling the president an idiot or a clown or whatever, I think you slipped a little. I think you let him get to you. And I want to see if we see another one, and I think we will, hopefully. 
I would like to see Biden be more composed. Stop laughing. Stop laughing. It's not funny to me anymore. The shit he's saying is fucking crazy. It was funny last time. It's not funny anymore. The guy needs to stop laughing at Trump's insane statements. He should be angry. Not laughing. I get it. I know why he's laughing. But he cannot do that anymore. That's a bad look, in my opinion. And this is, again, where I come at the Demo- – when I'm looking at the Democratic Party as a 33-year-old with zero political experience that just knows a little bit here and there about marketing, if I can point blank tell you like a few easily fixable massive problems, what have you guys been doing? Because you knew what Trump was coming with. Nobody – was taken aback. Last is night. surprised by this. No. Like, uh, I mean, w- was it shockingly insane? Yes. But in terms of. It was of only like, shocking in the sense that it was. That it, it was, was allowed and that it occurred. Well, that it finally came to realization. You were like, yeah, for yeah, me, yeah. it was like, oh, this is finally Now happening. it's happening. Like, now it's really gone it's to that actually level. actually doing this. Because we always, I feel like this was always expected. And, and it just we were, never really quite got there. We were surprised that it never got to this point. And now, because he won the presidency. And he's the president of the United States right now. I think he came out thinking, okay, well, I'm going to put it all on the line now. I'm going to do everything well, I that I thought. He's got nothing else in the tank at this point, really. Yeah, he's got, well, he's got nothing to lose either. It's either he's, he's yes. you know, he, gets he has it again. literally nothing to he lose. He gets it again, and that's the last one he ever has to worry about. Or he doesn't. Or he doesn't get it, and, and he needs to go sell millions and millions of dollars in books. And the crazier this thing gets, the better it is for him because the more people talk about him, uh, the more dramatic it gets, the more talk of will he vacate the White House if he loses? How long will that even take? Are we going to have all these mail-in ballots? Is there widespread voter fraud? The the right says that there is and that it's a possibility. The left says that there's zero evidence that that occurs. Uh, as far as I've read, it's a very, very small percentage of mail-in ballots that, that occur, that fraudulence occurs. Um, having checked several different places to make sure that I wasn't being duped by one slant or the other. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. It's a weird thing to make into the massive part of the to make one of the bigger talking points is strange um, that they had to even ask about it to verify like Chris Wallace was like, yo, do, what are either of you going to do to ensure that we have a fair election um, or and, and will you respect the results of it and all that? I mean, this thing's going to be a clusterfuck. We know generally where both these guys stand, opening, the, opening up the country. Trump wants to open it up all the way, stop being pussies. Nobody needs a mask. It'll be fine. It'll just go away. Get the economy and the stock market up. Go, baby, go. Money, 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 money. Biden uh, wants to slow it down, take a look at things, see how the numbers are, and decide what to do based on what he is told is best by scientists that I'm guessing he currently doesn't have access to. My biggest fear as well is, is say Biden does win the election – somehow Trump has a very peaceful transference of power and leaves the White House no problem at all. There's no issues there. Trump was such a polarizing leader that his supporters are not going to go anywhere. I mean, no. he's going to have like a cult-like holding for, for years. Like, what is that going to look like it's, in, in we've America? We've never really seen it like forward? that. We've never really seen it in, in this way, and that's going to be weird as fuck. And not well, even that's, close. that's if he loses. Yes, and, and, and if even even if he wins this one and it happens again four years down the line, like Still, th- this guy is going to well, be held in a he won't be in the in the debates. Obviously, you know that'd be a different thing. That's honestly, Trump is better off losing this election. If in terms of his psychotic following, he's better off because if he gets another four years to continue to do whatever, whatever the fuck it is he's doing, um. I'm assuming things are going to continue to go pretty poorly for us. Well, because then it's as not Americans. going to even he's not going to even have to worry about re-election. He and can that, literally do whatever he wants to do. But then it's like it doesn't really yet, but when they let when it ends, it's it's over. There's no there's no hype at the end of it. Sure. When a, when an 8-year president leaves, it's just sort of like peace. Like even Obama, like, you know, it was a big deal, but you're out. Next guy's in. I mean, there's no ceremonies like no, maybe there are. Nobody cares. I mean, Trump I mean. said that he would run more than two terms. At one point, he did say that. I hope he would still say that's a joke now. But yeah, I I don't know. It just I'm just saying like there's people look at tr- hardcore Trump supporters supporters Trump or support him like he's more than just a president. You know what I mean? Hardcore and, ones do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so like if he's forced out of office by losing this election, what does that mean for that percentage of people in the United States? Well, like, how why are the moderator? Who, again, I would add, uh, I thought he did a fine job. Chris, what's his name? Chris Wallace. In terms of having to keep it in a way that, I mean, look. What was he supposed to do? Chris Wallace, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, not much. Like, he literally, 
The only really critique I've seen is that he didn't bring up the rules of the debate until like 45 minutes or so into the debate. But yeah. after that, he used it quite often. Um, but regardless, it didn't really even make an impact I, on I, Trump. He didn't he, even give a shit, he really. He did stand up enough times to Donald Trump and try to get him to, to let Biden to talk and try to keep it in control enough for me to think he did a fine job. I would he, agree. Because that's a terrifying position to be in, and I thought he did. Considering that, I thought he did a pretty good job. I would also agree. Um, and to, like, oh, another thing I'd be looking for from Biden, when you, when you get questioned about, for, for people like me, one of my concerns is that I don't like some of the, the what Trump would call extremist left ideas um, because there are always overreactions on, or what I would call overreactions, on both political sides. There are pieces of the the left, the far left, that I don't agree with and that I don't align with and that um, that people like me are afraid, I think, that Joe Biden will be overly influenced by in office, that... They, we don't want things to swing too far. I'm a guy that wants to see things in the middle, and we've gone way to the right, and I'd like them to swing back toward the middle. And but, but generally, I don't want them to swing way far to the left either. You know, I want sure. them to be in the middle. Sure. It's, I think that's the best space to be, and that's just my opinion. I don't. It doesn't mean it's right for everybody, or that it that I'm right at all. Uh, yeah. I just like there's been some overcorrecting in ideologies, certain ones where I'm like, I don't know if I'm fucking all the way with that. I don't know. And, and I would like to him to have answers. When Trump accuses him of being a puppet for the radical left and says things like that, don't just laugh. Because it's not, again, it's not funny. I need an answer. Like, respond to that. Tell me why that's stupid. Why is that funny? Why is that so outrageous that it's funny? I need you to tell me. Like, I want, like, I want an actual answer. I don't, I don't, don't just laugh at his stupid ass questions. L answer them. Tell me why it's funny that his, his question is so stupid. Also, I think it's become pretty clear that we do need to start vacuuming the forest floors of California. Allegedly. They're just getting so dirty down there. I don't know who the idiot is that let those forest floors get so dirty, but somebody's got to get out there with the vacuum. It's pretty... Pr we can't just every year have these forest fires. And it's because of a lack of vacuuming. Anyway, what, a, what, a, what an outrageous, outrageous piece of American history, media, content, politics uh, internationally. It's, it's absolutely bonkers. To see the rest of this unfold is going to be, as we predicted, the most ridiculous shit show in the history of uh, my, my lifetime and, and, and most people's lifetimes to the point that my grandma is like, old, there are old people who are like, please God, just get me into a new presidency and then you can take me. My grandma's like, I just don't want to die with this dude. Like, I just want to see somebody. That's so shitty. How You're so bad at your job that people are like, I don't want to die when that guy has this job that is supposed to mean a lot. Like, I don't want that to be the dude I go out on his clock. That's fucking sad. Really weird. Really weird. It's going to be a weird year. Um, just to close out the other two that I wanted to say, opening up the country, obviously we know who stands for what, and then battling social injustice, it's pretty clear that Trump doesn't even really recognize it, whereas Biden sees it at least as a problem, even if it's one that he contributed to in the past, um, with some of the ways that he voted and some of the things he did in government. If you're worried about social issues, I think your candidate's pretty obvious. If you're worried about COVID, I think your candidate's pretty obvious. Uh, if you're worried about general... Niceties, I think your candidate's pretty obvious. And that's all I'll say about this one. It was the shit-slinging storm of the century. I, I'm, I cannot believe... Like, we watched it again this morning, and it was surreal. It was surreal. Monkeys will go back and watch this as shit-slinging porn. Yes. I can't... We, somebody in our chat said this last night, but I can't wait to see the, the, the like... Uh, bad lip reading. Bad lip reading for this, because it was just... It was something else, but we'll move on from there and bring you some happiness. RBP 328 is also brought to you by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. Every time I make one of their meals, I'm amazed that even I, an idiot in the kitchen, am able to crush these, and they're so damn good and so much better for me than literally everything else I eat. Their recipes are so delicious, and they have so many to choose from each week to help you break out of your recipe rut, which is something we've all run into in 2020, but they've got... Uh, 
anything and everything you could possibly need, including low-calorie, vegetarian, family-friendly recipes every week. They offer fresh, high-quality ingredients for a super flavorful experience, and over 90% of the ingredients are sourced directly from growers to ensure the freshest recipes are delivered to your door. They offer contactless delivery to your doorstep for easy home cooking with the family, obviously, to keep everybody safe in 2020. We want everything contactlessly delivered to our doorstep. HelloFresh has you there as well. And they cut out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy dinner and cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes or even 20 minutes with their quick recipe options. You can save up to 28% by using HelloFresh versus your grocery store shopping trips. And HelloFresh is committed to giving back, committed to making fresh, delicious food available now more than ever, and has taken extra steps to keep its employees and customers safe. Donated over 2.5 million meals to charity in 2019, and this year in 2020, they've stepped up their food donations amid the coronavirus crisis. Go to HelloFresh.com slash AD. RBP. That's eight zero RBP to get a total of eighty dollars off, including free shipping on your first box. HelloFresh.com slash ADRBP. Additional restrictions apply. Please visit HelloFresh.com slash ADRBP for details. But use the code ADRBP eight zero RBP for eighty dollars off, including free shipping on your first box from HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Start eating better today. Next segment. At least it's Fat Bear Week. Fuck. I'm so excited. Hell, we may have to sit through this ridiculous election and this insanity of a debate, the, 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 the pandemic, constant uncertainty, anxiety, and darkness swirling around us, but at least it's Fat Bear Week. Oh, to be a fat bear sunbathing on a warm rock with a belly full of delicious salmon. And if you're here and you're wondering, say what? What's Fat Bear Week? Google it, Fat Bear Week. It's when we choose the fattest bear of the year every year. We've been talking about it for a few years on this show. It's phenomenal. It's not our thing, though. It's uh, Katmai National... Katmai? Katmai? I believe I'm... Uh, K-A-T-M-A-I National Park. They do this every year. It's an annual tournament celebrating the success of the bears at Brooks River in Katmai National Park from September 30th today to October 6th. Your vote decides who is the fattest bear. So not only... Must you vote for one of these two old white guys? You must vote for who the fattest bear is this November. I'm just kidding. It's from September 30th again to October 6th. Um, it's a single elimination tournament okay, tournament, okay? For each set of two bears, you vote for the one who you think is the fattest. It's quite simple. You look at one bear. You look at the bear next to that bear. You say, which bear to me is the fatter bear? And then you vote. But you got to give these guys props, right? I mean, oh, oh, yeah. They're in prime bulk season right now. They're I bulking. Mean, they're getting ready to go hibernate, right? Which is why they're putting on all the weight. Yeah, they do this they every gotta, winter. They got to stock up. Every but honestly, winter. think about like to be these bears, Frost. Mm, to I mean, be they're one, living. To be one. Have you seen Katmai National Park? I mean, beautiful, oh, beautiful yeah. area. Oh, just just rivers gorgeous everywhere. Scenery. Gorgeous scenery. Gorgeous trees. Vacuumed floors. Vacuum of the forest. Vacuum from grass what I've heard, floors of the forest. Which so there's is no incredible. fires ever. There's never been a fire. Never, no fires. Never, not once. Sweep the floors. And beyond that, the forest. they're just getting so fat. On sashimi grade, two or salmon just popping up into their mouths, just Ooh, munching yeah. all day long. Yeah, I love salmon. I'm a big salmon guy. You big salmon guy? Huge. And not only that, they get to sun. Have you ever sunbathed on a rock, mm-hmm. like a warm rock? I have. There's not much better than like a cool, brisk day. What is it on about a, a very hot rock warm rock that makes everything better, including uh, sometimes a hot piece of salmon? I'm, I mean, this from Sam. You can go to sushi restaurants and get a hot rock, and they'll bring out the fish or the meat, and you cook it on the hot rock yourself. It's fucking incredible. It's like one of the top five things you could do as a human, in my opinion. Eat off a hot rock. Or, or eat lay raw on salmon. One. Or eat, well, yeah, sure. sure. I love raw, I'm a big raw salmon guy. We're big or, raw or tuna tanning. guy as well. Anyway, only one bear wins each week. One bear advances from the two, it's a bracket, single elimination tournament. One bear will be crowned champion of Fat Bear Week at the end of the thing. Uh, every winter, like Chris was saying, these guys have to hibernate, uh, so they go into this months-long famine. They don't eat or drink. They lose one-third of their body weight, so their survival during winter depends on them accumulating ample fat reserves. Katmai National Park just celebrates this what is an awesome and hilarious sort of— they show both pictures. They'll show you the before and after. What they looked like before they started uh, bulking, and then what they look like now in, the f- in full bulk right before they're ready to roll in there and just— for a whole summer uh, winter. Oh, they got some girth to them. Yeah. Um, 
it says on their website that each bear faces its own challenges in order to gain the body mass necessary to survive. Adult males need to grow large to dominate the best fishing spots and secure mating opportunities. Females need to gain weight for their own survival as well to support the birth and growth of cubs. Bear cubs experience the same hunger as older bears, but also undergo tremendous growth spurts. Juvenile bears living on their own for the first time must navigate a gauntlet of hazards to establish a home range and find food without mother's guidance. It's just a huge time of year for these bears, man. Wow. Who knew there was this much that went into hibernation season? Yeah. It's just all these bears doing crazy bear things growing up every year. The bear necessities, man. Jimmy's on his own for the first time hunting while his mama's asleep. Gary's over here bulking up to have his own fishing hole for the first time. Dude, listen to this line. Bears gorge on the richest, most easily obtainable foods they can find. In Katmai National Park, that most often means salmon. Oh, yeah. Dozens of bears gather at Brooks River to feast on salmon from late June until mid-October. Perhaps no other river on earth offers better, or offers bears the chance to feed on salmon for so long. Fat bears exemplify, <laughs> exemplify the richness of Katmai National Park in Bristol Bay, Alaska, a wild region that is home to more brown bears than people, and the largest, healthiest runs of sockeye salmon left on the planet. And I know there are fly fishermen who are just, like, furiously masturbating right now. Just stroking it. Just, oh, my God. They're the already fucking their- sockeye salmon just... Sp- they're flying out of the water. There's so many of them. They're putting their waders on right now, starting to make their way to their their Hummer with a snorkel on it, headed to Alaska to go camping for two weeks. Exactly. Go, go look at the website, though. Look at these glorious furry and fat fucks. They're phenomenal. Imagine being a settler for the first time in Alaska, and you just come across this, like, behemoth of a bear with a just monster stomach on him. I'm what a are you settler? Doing? You're a settler. I'm on the Oregon Trail. I'm settling there Actually, in Alaska. Actually, probably the originals were probably the Inuits or the Russian settlers that came in the early 1800s before Russia sold Alaska to us. What? Well, that's probably the people that saw these bears for the first time. Okay. I'm imagining them. Yeah. As you asked me to? Yeah. I mean, they're just walking up on some girth. I, I want to be friends. To... I mean, nope. they look super skinny cute. Bear, fat bear, bro. I see a bear. I'm out. No, nah, fat bear looks way cuter than skinny bear. Way fat less bear intimidating. looks like he's going to fuck on you. No, like, there's no way. Plop his ass on you and it's over, dude. <laughs> oh, they're so. Oh, the but these are definitely the vibes I need to recover from that debate, though. Bears. Do you, do you have uh, money on one bear in particular? Because I'm taking Holly for the repeat. On that note, it's a very good question. Next segment. Maybe sports will help. <laughs> now, I'm not positive if you can bet on Fat Bear Week one way or the other, but you can bet on the presidential debates, and I did that last night and I got rocked. It didn't go well for me at all. In also. fact, the tie colors that I bet on had extremely tough odds with them, and I got smoked. But that's not the point. We have a sports betting, a gambling uh, website sponsor, mybookie.ag, that is awesome. They've been a great supporter of the show. That's where we do all our sports betting. It's where we do all of our political betting as well. It was hilarious having all these prop bets rolling for last night. I bet on that uh, Biden would say malarkey. He never did. That fucked me. He did say Scranton. He did say Scranton. I failed to place a bet there. Uh, there was all kinds of options. It's hysterical. MyBookie.ag has anything and everything you could possibly want to bet in when it comes to sports, entertainment, politics. They've got it all. Use the promo code RBP when you sign up and you double your first deposit now at MyBookie.ag. AG. New players get up to $1,000 in free play. Stipulations apply. Winning season has begun at my bookie. Winning season means doubling your first deposit, means survivor, super contests, squares, football is back, college football, Big Ten, which Donald Trump brought up in the fucking... <laughs> his Big Ten shout-out was one of the other more bizarre moments of the entire thing. Um, Talking about football at all during a general or a presidential debate was pretty iconic. Yeah, but that having, has to be a first. Having anything to bet on at this point uh, is is a saving grace considering how shittily the year has gone. We need distractions. We need things to have fun with. And here's one of them from our sponsor, MyBookie.ag. Again, use the code RBP when you sign up and uh, bet on the next debate that will allegedly happen. I know I will be again, as it was hilarious. Speaking of which, bad news in the NFL is we have our first COVID outbreak. Mm. Um, the Steelers-Titans game has officially been delayed from Sunday to Monday or possibly even Tuesday due to an outbreak in the, after Sunday's game with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, I'm sorry. That game, the Steelers-Titans game, is the one that's been postponed either Monday or Tuesday. And uh, the NFL said in a statement today that a new game date and time will be announced as soon as possible, adding that the postponement will, quote, allow additional time for further daily COVID-19 testing and to ensure the health and safety of our players, coaches, and game day personnel. 
after uh, four Titans players, including starting nose tackle Daquan Jones, long snapper Bo Brinkley, and practice squad tight end Tommy Hudson, and five team personnel members this week all tested positive. This was sort of the nightmare we all wanted to avoid. And that we were all like, how are they going to get away with football during this when like it doesn't seem like we had some issues early in the MLB season. They seem to overcome them. By the way, go Astros. One game deep. I believe the other game has started. Let me check the score and see if they're winning. But the MLB was able to overcome them. Will the NFL similarly be able to, or will my NFL draft have been a total and utter nothing? 1-0 Strohs. My NFL fantasy draft. 1-0 Strohs! Let's go! But, um... My over isn't looking good, though. My fantasy team sucks dick, by the way. I'm 0-3, and I will be doing an 0-3 speech on Friday's Patreon episode on patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast. If you would like to hear that 0-3 speech, you will need to be there for ad-free premium Fridays, which occur every Friday on patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast. I will give you that 0-3 speech, as you all deserve it, and I deserve it. I deserve to be ashamed and punished accordingly. But, uh... Yeah, speaking of the MLB playoffs and the Astros, you can bet on mybookie.ag. Again, this is our sports betting sponsor, and uh, the MLB playoffs are underway. They do not currently have any COVID issues, to my knowledge. We'll see what happens with the NFL. I think it's going to be fine, though. And maybe sports will help. They've helped so far. I'll say again, I didn't give enough credit. When they they started canceling sports seasons and people were freaking out, I was like, oh, guys, come on. Like, we've got bigger fish to fry. A lot of people are going to die here. Fuck sports. Sure. And I love sports. I'm a big sports fan. You do. Um, I love betting on sports. I love watching sports. I'm a psychotic Ro- Rockets fan. I w- I'm a very confused Astros fan, and I'm a very unhappy Texans fan. Um, but when they brought back sports, man, a, a, what was it, a month ago, a month and a half ago at this point, a couple months back, uh, whatever actually, it started, basketball, it's been a minute. It's been lacrosse, a minute, I guess. Lacrosse, was lacrosse the, came back a few months ago. We were first. It, good for you. That was great. But that didn't quite get me there. When basketball came back, that was huge. Yeah. Like, I I didn't realize how much my brain needed something to just fucking stare at that had nothing to do with anything, even with, like, it, it being such a big year for social justice issues in the NBA. Just, it was positivity. There was no negativity. It was just positivity in sports. And even it was negativity and the Rockets sucked and they lost and man, D'Antoni bailed. But it, I didn't realize. I didn't give enough credit. To the Lakers? Mm-hmm. Who are in the finals now against uh, the Miami Heat? By the way, congratulations to the Miami Heat. I know y'all didn't expect to be there. I'm taking the Heat. I'm, I'm not taking the, the Heat because I just watched. The heat. I saw what LeBron and AD look like, and and it was scary. Uh, Tyler Hero though, next LeBron. Some have said nobody's actually said that. Nobody's but said dude's that. Dude's a freak. He, a I mean, he's person. been balling out. He's twenty. Did you know he's twenty years old? He's a child. Like twenty you. years old. Just a lad. Just Younger a young than me. lad. He makes me feel like an old bag of dirt. But he is living the best life Chris he could possibly live. Chris is at that point living. where he's like, man, this professional athlete is one year younger than me or my exact same age. And I'm like, bro, I'm at the stage where, like, your dad, he keeps telling you about guys that are coming into the league that are grandchildren of people he used to watch play. <laughs> like, that's where I'm at. I'm like, fuck. Like, my, my childhood idols are, like, the old dudes that get interviewed on SportsCenter now. You know how you watch like Barkley and Shaq, yeah, and you're like, these are the OGs, yeah, like that. Those were the, my dudes, and now they're old as fuck, and they sit in chairs all day and bark at each other about shit. So trust me, it only gets downhill from here. But that's the first weird one. But that was the first one where, I, well, younger than then me you start and doing to notice, really well, yeah. But and then like you'll start to notice. Hold up, I'm the same age as like the best players in the leagues now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then the next one is, hold up, the I'm be- older than the best players in these leagues now. And then it's when they talk about washed old like wide receivers in the NFL, I'll go check their age and I'm that age. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, fuck. It's like is... Cam Newton is getting a little old these days. It's like, like how Cam old is Newton Cam age. Newton? Oh my 31? god, what? son of a bitch. <laughs> fuck me, I'm 33. Yeah. I'm never going to the league, man. Yeah, it gets really it's weird. It's over. Anyway, I know these are strange times, but uh, I, ho- I hope our show and today's episode in particular bring you some clarity, some levity, or at least a better understanding of what we're looking at from, from what I would argue is a mostly unbiased standpoint. And from unbiased, I mean I try to look at things from the perspective of what I think is best for people and for my people in, in America. And Americans are my people, the whole fucking country, not just part of it, not one race, not one section, not one state, not one city. The whole country. When we vote for president, we're considering the whole country. So um, I know this is going to be a difficult couple months, a couple few, maybe five, six. We'll see. But hell, we made it this far. We Might made as it, well keep going. We made it nine fucking ten months into this thing. We can survive another few. 
we can handle these two idiots and in, in their debates and we can pick one of them and we can peaceably move to the next uh, hopefully phase of this country's existence uh, that w- where hopefully we can start to either way. Hopefully, I think there is some change. Let me just say, I don't know who's going to win. I think it's pretty I, my I've made it very clear, frankly stated that I'm going to be voting for Joe Biden when it comes to president with the rest of the ballot. I'm going to be considering every single candidate individually. I'm not planning on voting straight ticket Democrat or straight ticket anything ever again in my life. And one of the things I want to discuss on this show in the coming weeks is how to prepare for that, because I've never voted as a fully educated, responsible member of the voting population before. I have voted as a partially educated one and a fully ignorant one. I've never voted fully educated. And I want to know how to become that over the coming weeks. So we're going to be talking about it on this show, again, from a perspective of helping all of our listenership and ourselves become more educated voters, not from a perspective of trying to dismantle this person or that person or attack this person or attack that person. And we're going to make fun of everybody involved in this situation because, frankly, it's one of the funniest things that's ever occurred from a strictly comedic standpoint if you don't take into consideration the millions of lives that are at risk. So we will get through this election season together in the remainder of 2020. We're going to have fun while we do it. We may cry a little, but we will laugh more. I promise you that. Before you head out to take on the world, it's time for some very important announcements. First and foremost, you've been saddled with three legal obligations as a result of having listened to this entire podcast. Number one, rate and review. Rate and review the show. Give us five stars. Write a couple sentences about why you enjoy the Ross Boland podcast. Move on to number two. Tell one friend, family member, coworker, or neighbor, any one individual that you think you would might enjoy RBP, share the show with them today. Tell them to watch it on YouTube or listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or SoundCloud or wherever the hell. Share the show with one person this week, one person next week. That's how we grow. That's how we keep growing. That's how when people drop off because I've said something that they disagree with or they're offended by, we replace them with new listeners by word of mouth. So I appreciate y'all who helped to share the show, grow the show, and keep us moving in the right direction. It means a lot. It's a legal obligation. You have to do it. You don't have a choice. And then you can move on to number three, which is to support our sponsors who keep us in business and support us. Obviously, today we had birddogs.com, code RBP, get those free nunchucks, hellofresh.com. HelloFresh is phenomenal. HelloFresh.com slash 80RBP. Get that 80 bucks off your first box. MyBookie.ag. Code RBP, go bet on literally whatever the fuck you could possibly think of. They've got all of it on there. And my bookie is a, a phenomenal platform that uh, has been hilarious to use over the course of the debate so far. I can't wait to bet on the next one. Follow us on Those are your three legal obligations, first and foremost. Check all three boxes. I'll call off the dogs. We can all live long and prosper. And the show will continue to uh, be the show in the way that you love and know. Follow us on Instagram, at the Ross Boland Podcast. On Twitter, at Ross Boland Pod. We are also on Facebook.com slash Ross Boland Podcast. And you can follow me, Ross Boland, on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at WR Bolin at W-R-B-O-L-E-N on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Catch us live Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Central on twitch.tv slash Boss Roland. And Chris, where can everybody follow you on social media? You can find me on Twitter at Q0ULS. You can find me on Instagram at ChrisSC99. And you can find me on Snapchat at Chris underscore Coulson. That's C-O-U-L-S-O-N. Check out Bowling Media's television and film podcast, Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, OCC, available wherever RBP is available. This uh, we, Last week we covered the Emmys. This week we're going to be covering The Boys Season 2, boys. Lovecraft Country up to its most recent episode, and I believe starting Yellowstone Season 2 as well. We're catching up on Yellowstone. We started late. OCC, again, great show hosted by me, my dear friend Barrett Dudley. We have a great time discussing the best in TV and film and general entertainment industry every week. Brought to you by Bolin Media, just like RBP is. Oysters, clams, and cockles. Go subscribe. That will do it for RBP 336, produced by Mariah Gossett and Mike Moody Garcia of Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. We will be back on Monday with RBP 337. And, of course, first Friday on Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast with another exclusive premium ad-free episode for the dues-paying members of the RBP gang pledging their monthly support to keep the podcast not only showing but growing. Minimum of just $5 monthly on Patreon. Come through, support the show, get more RBP on Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast. You are not alone. Podmen get paid. Respect Mr. Park. Strength and honor. Gang, gang, gang. Peace be with you. And And also with you. you.